Good day guys, I'm Mini War Painter and today is the day we put paint onto Araman. I'll catch you after the intro. If you've just stumbled across this chain of tutorials for Araman, just want to let you know that there's one more video you may have missed on how to paint his Discus Inch, which you can find on my channel. Other than that, as we go on further now, Araman's going to be broken down into five different videos on how to paint all the different aspects of his model. However, they won't all be available on YouTube. Most of them will be available on my Patreon account, which you can gain access to via the link in the description box below. Now, what you will have available though in this video is I'll be showing you how to paint Araman's blue armor the gold trim and how to get the reflective effect going on just like we did in his discus inch also i'll uh, be covering how to paint his purple tabard around his waist so you're going to have some great demonstrations of how to glaze your colors on um, to develop the nice transitions from dark purple all the way up to its highlights in the other video that you'll have available on youtube is how to paint all the different trinkets on the model of Araman. so you know like the gems uh, his book is a uh, book of Araman along with um, a few uh, vials and stuff, which are all, again, great practices to take advantage of such small details to make them really represent the model nicely. Um, a lot of people neglect these sort of aspects to the model and they just paint in nice, simple, flat colours, but they're missing, you, you're miss, they're missing out on the huge opportunity to really give this care, the, the model character by taking advantage of these textures. But that'll be in another video. On, um, on how to paint Araman, which I'll post later on. Now, apart from those two videos, I've also got three more videos on Patreon. So if you want to learn how to paint Araman's red crimson cape, or the smoke that's coming out of his hand, you can find those videos on Patreon, as well as this stave, which I've managed to paint with a really cool OSL glowy effect at both ends, with all, which also sort of radiates onto his cape. So to learn how to paint those complex areas, click on the link in the description box below and that'll take you to my Patreon account. But for now, let's go talk about the armor and get on with some painting. So if you're looking now, this is the end result of what I'm going to show you how to paint. There's so much going on with the model with so many textures. But before we get too carried away, let's take a look at what we're going to get painted in this video. So here you can see we've got a nice purple tabard to blend through as well as some epic shiny gold trim. The armor as well hasn't been painted typically flat, but in fact has a unique polished and glistening texture of its own. All effects to help complement the mysterious ways of the Thousand Suns. Taking advantage of these textures and painting them to reflect what they're made of will really bring an intense atmosphere to your model, making you want to stare at it as it consumes you to chaos. So, to start the armour off, I'm going to base in all the blue panels with Incubi Darkness. It's important that we start these base coats off with a good strong coat, so keep applying layers until you eradicate any patchiness of your undercoat showing through. Then it's Rhinox Hide to base all the gold trim. Better to base the gold now as it helps to frame the model better for painting in your other colours. Also, it will minimise any chances of getting Rhinox Hide on any of your beautifully finished blue armour, should you leave it later to do. Next, it's Thousand Suns Blue to begin glazing in the highlights. I'll be applying some of this glaze in more of a stippled fashion on any flat areas. Stippling is basically applying small little pricks of paint, and a lot of them, to build up the tone on the surface. This is one of many great ways to how you can develop texture on your model, as opposed to layering in this tone flat, which is boring. Remember to apply your glazes after letting the previous layer dry first, or you risk pulling apart the pigment on the model. 
Then we're going to apply another highlight in the same manner as before with Arum and Blue. Being very selective to where we want to build up the highlights, taking into account to where light from above will naturally reflect off. Notice how I draw the pigment with the brush in the direction I want each highlight to be most intense. Then it's a highlight of Baharov Blue, making sure to reduce the amount we apply in order to keep some of the previous highlights still showing. As we get higher and higher in tone, it's important you remember that less is more. Too much of these lighter tones could wash out the effect we're after, making the model look more pastel. It's a good idea as well as you stipple this highlight on to do a couple of random spots and lines in the darker tones you've left alone. Apply this step sparingly and you'll give yourself a nice scratchy effect on the ancient armour. And that's the blue armour completed and we're left with a nice non-metallic metal effect to a scratchy yet polished and well maintained suit of armour. Next is a 1 to 1 mix of Scale 75 Negra Gold and Rhinox Hide. This will then get used to layer over all the gold trim, leaving the Rhinox base coat we applied earlier showing in the recesses. Normally I'll do this step with pure Negra Gold, but the more steps of tone we add to a model, gives us more room for impressive effects, which is exactly what Araman deserves. Once this stage is completed, I'll focus on one section of trim on the model at once and begin dipping between the tones I have on my palette to develop the contrast of dark and bright reflections in the gold. For the purpose of this tutorial, you'll see me focus on his left shoulder pad and helmet. Here I'm using a dark tone of my golden brown mix to begin toning down on this corner of the shoulder pad so I can make the edge highlights around it stand out more later on. Next I'll use Negra Gold to pick out the sections of the trim I want to be brighter. There's really no formal instruction to this process. It's literally what catches your fancy at that split moment. The only way you can gauge these types of choices, deciding what should be dark and what should be bright, is by attempting these effects yourself. When I look at the helmet, I want the viewer's attention to be directed to his face. And as his helmet has such a wide spread, the best way to take advantage of this is to pick out your highlights in a way that guides you along each horn subtly until your eyes reach the face, where all the brighter highlights will be focused. To enforce this effect, it's important as well to be selective of where to place your darker tones. I'll aim to add this along the length of his horns, leaving a small section in the center of each one to have a brighter reflective shine to it. These small placements of highlights will act like arrows as they draw your gaze to his face. Everything you know is in your mind. Now that we've taken our highlights up to Negro Gold, we'll move up the chain and make a one-to-one -one mix of Negro Gold and Kunzite Alchemy.
This will then be glazed and stippled to build up the highlights that I blocked out earlier with pure negro gold. Highlighting the gold now should be relatively straightforward as we've already established where we want all our darker and brighter tones to be in the previous step. Now it's a case of stippling in and edge highlighting smaller amounts of pigment as we go up in brightness and tone. this stage completed you can begin to see the gold take shape. If you're not feeling the warm fuzzy sensation I have right now then go back to your previous darker tones and fix what you're not happy with. Moving on to Citroen Alchemy I'll now add a spot highlight to further pop out my reflections. You could as well if you're feeling brave add a couple of tiny pricks amongst your darker tones just to add character to a potentially flat area. But when I say add a prick I mean a f***ing prick or you'll be gutted with the awkward dot of death staring at you wondering why you look at him like he's just some big mistake. And that's the gold completed. Over the last couple of years painting gold this way has really boosted my confidence with true metallic paints. Before there was once a point where I felt such a failure. I just couldn't for the life of me base, wash and edge highlight gold or silver to look good. So if you want some impressive true metallics then take my advice. Start dark and build up your highlights selectively. Not every edge has to be highlighted. Not every surface has to be bright. Because true metallic paints reflect light naturally already. It's the darker tones we struggle to uphold in order for the brighter tones to contrast against. Moving on to the purple tabard, I'll begin by basing this with a one-to-one -one mix of Nagaroth Knight and Abaddon Black. I want the tabard to appear darker than the rest of the armour but with vibrant purple highlights. This will avoid too much attention of the viewer being drawn towards his legs as opposed to his face, where our focal point wants to be. After getting a few layers down, I go to pure Nagaroth Knight and begin glazing this on and along all the flat areas, leaving my previous dark tone alone in the recesses. When glazing, make sure you allow each layer to dry before applying the next, and always stroke the brush in the direction where you want the pigment to be the most strongest. Be prepared to lay down a lot of layers in order to build up the opacity of the tone but making sure that you reduce the coverage ever so slightly each time in order to create the seamless transition between the tones. Now I'm going to mix in some Screamer Pink into Nagaroth Knight and begin shifting the tone slightly from a cold purple hue to a warm ready purple. Once you've established your mixture, load your brush with just a little and check the consistency on your thumbnail. You want the pigment to tint the surface subtly. Then apply this glaze aiming to build your highlights on any surfaces you can see that catches a slight glare of light from your desk lamp when you position it right above your mini. This is a great practice to carry out when looking to judge where your zenithal highlights should be. If your glazing efforts ever appear patchy, stay strong to the technique. Keep applying your layers until you get a strong opacity, then go back to your previous darker tone and attempt to glaze over any harsh lines of transition to smoothen them out.
Then, when you're ready to move on, add some more Screamer Pink into the mixture and continue glazing in your highlights, reducing the amount you cover every time. As you can see, the tabard at this stage is really beginning to pop out. All those subtle smooth highlights we've just built up is now beginning to define the shape of the fabric. So now I'll mix in some pink horror into Screamer Pink to progress on with these highlights. I've not bothered introducing a pure Screamer Pink stage because it's hardly worth the minute change in tone as we've already come so close to pure Screamer Pink in the last stage. Now you can see this is only being applied to form the edges that have shaped in the fabric. Focusing all our brighter tones on these confined areas will help to show off the tabard's enchanted tone shifts from dark purple to a bright reddy purple, whilst still maintaining its grim dark appearance. Coming close to the end now, I'll go at the highlights with pure pink horror. Rather than glazing these highlights in on the edges, I'll instead stipple this stage on as I don't want to overpower the tabard with too much of a pink tone. Plus, the stippled effect will help add the illusion of a texture to the fabric. Then to all the long folds in the cloth, I'll just glaze in a small portion in the centre. Then to finish the tabard off, it's a small amount of Kisler flesh mixed into Pink Horror. This is to be applied very sparingly as a spot colour. Too much and you risk making the tabard look more pink than purple. And with that finished, so is the tabard, leaving those with a very rich purple finish. I'll leave you now to enjoy the footage and I'll catch you at the end. And that's a wrap. Thanks for watching and I really hope you find this video useful. Don't forget there will be a second video coming out on Ironman on YouTube all about all the decorative elements on his model. However, if you want all this content now and the extra content, don't forget you've got Patreon. So click on the link in the description box below and you'll get access to all of the content on Ironman which will include his red crimson cape, the smoke that comes from his hand and how to paint the really cool OSL effect on his stave. Thanks for watching guys and don't be shy to mix those paints. Ta-ra!